Welcome to Via the Grapevine, proudly brought to you by Tony DaCosta of Liquor City, Claremont, and offering you the chance to learn more about wine, the masters behind them, and even which wines to collect. As always, there will be a chance for you to win based on this chat. So look out for that post right here on the Via the Grapevine Facebook page. Gary and Kathy Jordan have been making world-class wines since 1993 on this 164 hectare Stellenbosch property. They focus on producing fiercely individual wines that combine the fruity accessibility of the new world with the classic elegance of the old. Here to share more on their wines and entice you to visit is Jacques Stein, second youngest Cape wine master and general manager of Jordan Wine Estate. Jacques, a very warm welcome to you. Welcome Guy and thank you very much for having me. I appreciate that. We last spoke in August 2019 on yes. By the Grapevine, uh, before this whole Zoom thing became quite fashionable. Yeah. So it's, it's great to put a face to the name and to, to have you back on. Uh, I, I wanted to find out, I hope the uh, awful fires of the previous weeks there in Stellenbosch didn't have too much of an impact on your harvest, did they, from a smoke point of view? No, 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 luckily not. Uh, and luckily today we are, we're seeing quite a bit of rain, which um, in a sense uh, will maybe push through this last bit of ripening which we need for the black skin grape varieties. But no, we didn't have any smoke influence on Jordan. Um, there were some farms in the Yonkersuk and the Banuk area that uh, were impacted, but luckily we were quite far away from them. But yeah, the smoke was, was quite intense. What's been happening on the farm since we last chatted in uh, back in 2019? Uh, for one thing, I know that you've uh, introduced a profound Blanc de Blancs MCC. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, let's talk a little bit about the, the, the Cup Classic. So our first vintage we produced was the 2015. Um, and we only released it later on because we wanted to keep some time on the lease. And then, yes, uh, when we released it first, it, it was very, very well received. And it's made in this really aperitif, the drier style of Cup Classic. So it's made to enjoy uh, before, before your lunch or before your dinner, even through breakfast. It's something to sip whilst you're having guests around. Um, and it's made from quite a unique block on Jordan, as most of our wines are made is all from estate grapes. So it's made from a USA clone block right on the ridge where the, the, the east facing uh, becomes west facing and it ripens quite late and the technical analysis on those, on those grapes are really, really good for cup classics. So yeah, we are keeping on producing that, which is very exciting. And um, it, it comes on the back of our idea of offering people unique experiences when they come to the farm. So. We are producing um, select bottlings and select wines, which people can enjoy if they're part of the Insiders Wine Club, or when they come to the state that they can enjoy and drink it when they are here. And it's not necessarily available in the larger retail trade or in the larger restaurant trade. Um, and that's part of our idea of um, giving you something else and that little bit of uh, magic when you get to the farm that you can experience something that you might not necessarily experience in, in, in outside of the boundaries of the farm. But also in 2019, we had quite, quite a lot of plans in terms of expanding um, what we offer on Jordan in terms of luxury villas, in terms of our gardens, uh, um, the hospitality experience. But yeah, then COVID happened uh, last year, so that's in the, that's on the back burner for now. I noticed when we were there recently that you've got a, a new tasting room that's situated kind of down in, in the gardens more than up in the main building. Um, exactly, it, yeah. So that, that actually we launched in November 2019. So it was a, when I visited you last that we were in the right of the middle of that project. Mm. My wife and I were... were as I said, recently there, and we were treated, thank you, to your 360-degree vineyard tour of Jordan yeah. Wine Estate. And our tour guide was Eben. Uh, what a fascinating insight it gave us with regards to mm. different aspects and terroir 
that you benefit from. I never realized just how much you have there. Uh, you, you, you basically have vines facing all quarters of the compass, don't you? Yes, yeah, so that, that is essentially the cornerstone of our, our wine offering is where we are situated and what, how the farm is built, essentially. Um, uh, and we offer this vineyard drive for people to really understand why, we, why on Jordan we can make fresh, fruity, dry styles of white wines, rich styles of white wines, right through to full-bodied Cabernet Sauvignon-dominated wines, because it's not... It's not the, the, the general rule of thumb that one farm can produce this range of wines from their own grapes. Normally what you would find is a farm would either have two slopes or one slope and the grapes that they grow on that property is in terms of its range is much smaller. But because we literally sit in the Stellenbosch Kloof, the upper end of Stellenbosch Kloof, we are literally on this ridge. So what it does, it creates this really really interesting site where we on the, where we can plant more sensitive aromatic white grape varieties on the south and the east facing side of the property which is cooler also gets morning sun and we can plant the black skin grape varieties on the north and the west facing side of the property so the west facing side of the property faces cape town and table bay so it's it really is the site which essentially allows us to first create this amazing range of wines, but also to uh, allow people to, to come and experience the farm and the hospitality and do this drive so people can say, okay, well, now it, now it actually makes sense. Because it's not only this the aspects that, that plays a role, but it's also the varying altitude. So we can plant anywhere from 250 to almost 400 meters above sea level. So you essentially have these varying altitudes, these different aspects. Um, and then we've, we don't only get this false bay breeze influencing, so the false bay is what influenced the most of the Stellenbosch area on the south facing, east facing side. But if you go to the west facing side, we've got this breeze coming from the west coast from Table Bay, which is influenced by the Benguela current. So essentially what we have, we have these two breezes almost culminating at Jordan and really helping us to prolong the harvesting and the ripening season of these grapes. And we are often two, two weeks later than the middle of Stellenbosch um, in terms of harvesting. It's fascinating. And the one thing that I think is really great about it is, you know, when you go hiking, they, they always say an, a cup of tea out of your flask always tastes better outdoors. But that same cup of tea back home is just ooh, flask tea. And yeah. um, when you're on a tour like that and you're being exposed to the terroir and the aspect and uh, the scents, the bouquets of the vines, and then you get poured a glass. Oh, it's absolutely yeah. heavenly. At it's the a vineyard. glass of wine you'll ever taste. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it is a special experience. It's something I always invite people to do if they really want to have an immersive wine experience in Jordan. Take us through, if you will, the four ranges of wine that you currently have on offer at uh, Jordan, please. So uh, our range consists of four um, different styles of wine. So essentially we can start right at the top which is our premium range, which consists of one wine at the moment, and that's our Sophia, which is the base barrels from the Cobbler Seal Vineyard and the base barrel from Cabernet, which we blend together. And that's essentially the ultimate expression of what you can experience from Jordan Estate Grapes in terms of a red wine. Then we've got the reserve range, which is made of the Noble Late Harvest, made from uh, our Riesling Vineyard on the south uh, facing aspect, the Nine Yard Chardonnay, which is very, very famous, the Cobbler Seal, which is the, the border blend, and to have the Blanc de Blanc Cap Classique situ situating in that range. Then we have the Core Range, which is essentially our estate wine, so all single varietals, um, and often they are one varietal expressed in different styles. So for instance, in the varietal range, 
We've got the Chardonnay, which you can experience either in the unoaked version or in the barrel fermented version. We've got two Sommier Blancs, one being tank fermented, fresh, dry, lively and fruity. The other one being the barrel fermented Sommier Blanc called the Outlier. We've got a barrel fermented Shannon called Inspector Beringi. And we've got the three uh, ver red varietals in the form of the Prospectus Sarah, the Black Magic Merlot and the Long Fuse Cabernet. That's essentially the core of our range. And then we've got a lifestyle range, which is uh, focused on the retail market, especially, but also on glass wines uh, listings. It's very uh, accessibly priced. It's accessibly made and it's made to enjoy two bottles per person. And that's the chameleon range. And that's what we call initially called the blended range. So it was a blend of white grape varieties for the chameleon white. The rosé was Syrah and Merlot, made from Syrah and Merlot. We had the chameleon red, which was Cabernet Merlot and a little bit of Syrah. And then we added onto that range in the form of the no added sulfur Merlot, which is a very strong retail wine for us. And in the form of a single varietal Chenin Blanc, which is also tank fermented. Um, and we are playing around with the Syrah at this stage. So essentially, because we don't buy in any grapes into Jordan, you essentially have to build your wine range based on what your offering is in terms of your grape offering. So mm. you identify the better sites for different ranges. So essentially, the top sites goes into the top wines. Um, and through a selection process and whatever doesn't make there goes into the chameleon. But as I always say to people, the same, the, the same farming activity we do for whatever goes into the chameleon is the same farming activity we go, whatever goes into the Sophia. So you will experience a quality um, pers perspective and a quality assurance in every range that you enjoy from Jordan. If you've got 60 or 70 bucks to spend, or if you've got a thousand bucks to spend, mm -hmm. you experience the ethos of Jordan through every wine that we produce. Yeah, it's, it's not like the uh, vineyards that produce the chameleon range are just left and, oh, we'll get to no. that later. Everything yeah, exactly. is treated the same. But obviously, as we've already mentioned, aspect, um, the terroir, all of that comes into play that produces the, the different qualities of grape according to where they stand. And yeah. often, I think often is, many wine in Stellenbosch, sorry, just to add to that, they would, they would produce the, the core range and then just buy in wine um, to have like this lifestyle range offering, uh, and, and th that's the norm. But, but we, I said, we don't do that. The same winemaking, the same winemaker makes the nine yards as the same winemaker makes the chameleon Sauvignon Blanc Chardonnay. I guess this is possibly a bit of an unfair question, but I, I asked it of you a couple of years back, and I, I feel that it's still relevant given the different tiers of, of wine mm. that you offer. If you were to only choose three, to best communicate the ethos of Jordan Wine Estate in a bottle, what three wines would you choose? Yeah, so uh, we started making wine, uh, we started farming since 1982, but we started making wine in 1993. And I think the last time I said to you, I think Chardonnay is the grape that we probably expressed the best on the estate due to the different ranges we can make from these grapes. But I can probably add to that to say, um, you know, 20 odd years later, um, our, our, our style and our ethos is the, to blend richness of fruit with the freshness of the fruit. So when you have a Jordan wine, it's not only uh, rich, but it's also a freshness built into it, but also consistency. Um, the fact that if you buy a Jordan wine, you will know it's consistently well-made and it's consistently of a high quality. And if I think of the three wines that maybe encapsulates that the best is probably our, our Chardonnay, which was, so the Jordan Chardonnay, which right at the beginning in the 93 is actually now a barrel fermented Chardonnay. Um, our Jordan Cabernet right at the beginning is now what we are call our long fuse Cabernet. And then our Chameleon Red is still made since the early 19s to now. So in terms of capturing the spirit of Jordan, I would probably say those three wines um, because we made it in the beginning and we're still making it now and it's still of the same quality 
we've ever made. And so to the best part of Via the Grapevine for me, and that's the tasting. Uh, today, tasting the barrel fermented Chardonnay, which I believe is comprised of a variety of Chardonnay clones planted on yes. different slopes, harvested at different ripening levels. That sounds like a lot of fun at final blending. <laughs> yeah. Tell us more. Yeah, so, so we've, we've got a, quite a numerous amount of vineyards we've planted on the property and all from a range of American clones to French clones and they're all situated on a different part of the slope or at a, at a different aspect. So essentially what we do around the, just the farming activity stays the same. We obviously know by now which block is our nine yards block. We would bring in these grapes into the cellar and uh, the, the nine yards block would be treated like we would normally make the nine yards, which is all barrel fermented, uh, a higher of a new oak component. And then we have our blocks that we identify to go into the unoaked component of our wines. And we've got our Chardonnay blocks which you've identified that goes into the barrel fermented component of our wines. And these different blocks then uh, get different percentages of oak. So third full, second full, first full oak. And then what we do after barrel fermentation and maturation on the lease, which is a very important part of creating this beautiful mouth filling richness of the wine, all go through malolactic fermentation. We then taste through every single barrel in the cellar. And the reason why we taste through every single barrel in the cellar is that sometimes we find that the a specific vineyard is coming into maturity and a specific vineyard is starting to show some characteristics of the Jordan estate that we would like to incorporate later on um, in our wine. So if we don't taste through every barrel, if we just assume that this vineyard normally gives us this, we're just gonna blend it into that range. We miss an opportunity to see the progress and the development of a vineyard. So it's very, very important to taste through every barrel to say, hey, yes, we've planted this block seven years ago and look what it's doing at this point in time. We, not, we might need to reconsider its uh, vinification methods and what we wanna do with it in the cellar, maybe tweak the, the fermentation process, maybe tweak the sulfur levels, whatever. Whatever discussion came, after we've tasted through these barrels. And of course, um, you've also, what, sorry to yes. interrupt, you've, you, just on that point, of course, you've also got old vines. You've got 35 years. And as you say, with yes. the aging of those vines, they're going to deliver different yeah. quality, different flavor profiles. Well, exactly. So we farm for long-term future. You know, we, we're not farming, you know, to plant every 10 years, we plant a new vineyard because whatever the, the, the mood of the world is in terms of grape variety. So we plant the right grape to the right spot in the right aspects. And you know, we've, in the beginning we had Pinot Noir planted on this east facing slope, which we took out because it didn't work. So it's all through um, trial and error essentially, but we've now more or less know what works where and we, and we follow that recipe because, because this is what the site wants to say. But after this tasting, we then identify the barrel that goes into the barrel fermented Chardonnay. And with all our barrel fermented white wines, the estate range, the varietal range, we always blend in an unoaked component back into the wine. Because that is where the freshness comes back in. Because if you barrel ferment a white wine and you keep it on its lees, plus go through my lactic fermentation, you create quite a rich wine with lots of density on the mid palate, but it lacks freshness. Mm. And that other component then, depending vintage by vintage, we would then blend back into the wine to lift the fruit characteristics and create really balanced wine, which, is, which, you, are, which you are experiencing now. And that's exactly what you've created with this. Um, it's quite difficult to show the bottle with the virtual image, but there it is. Um, you, you have, you've got that lovely zesty citrus fruit that, that, that kind of delivers on the mid palate whilst being held up on the, on the side of your palate by that lovely uh, rounded butterscotch kind of mm. sensation, feeling, taste. Yeah. So that, that is, as you say, you've hit that nail on the head. It's absolutely delicious. 
What would you say to people? I mean, obviously you would say, well, don't, that's fine. If you don't like wooded Chardonnay, we've got the Anna Chardonnay. That's, that's obvious. But I mean, how are, you, how are you trying to change that communication with visitors? Because I'm, I'm sure that there is a lot of people that immediately, as soon as they see barrel fermented, they go, I don't want, I don't like wooded Chardonnay. No, it's too mm. much. I don't like that. Mm. What kind of communication is available to you around, around changing that perception? Well, I can say to you, the Barrel Fermented Chardonnay is probably one of our highest sellers on Jordan. It's in, in, and, and the reason for that is because they know our style. So people that have been drinking Jordan Chardonnay have been drinking it for 20 years. Mm. And they're going to drink it for the next 20 years because they like that style. They can identify it. And we haven't changed much. You know, it's always been on the richer side of the spectrum. It's always been quite flamboyant in its fruit. Um, and that's the consistency component that comes into our winemaking is that we've, we've, we've decided at the root to say, this is what we want to try and create from these vineyards. A bar from tweaking the oaking regime here and there, we want to have a richer style and we want people to identify that as the Jordan style. So, so I, I always say to people, just taste, taste it first because the perception of barrel fermented is that that old American oak, Australian shy style, which was quite low in acidity and it was very buttery and it was, you almost had to chew through the wine just to get through it. Um, but this wine still has freshness into it. It's still picking up the primary fruit characteristics. So it, there's no reason for it, for you not to have a refreshing experience when you have the barrel fermented Chardonnay. Yes, it doesn't have the linearity of our tank fermented cold fact Sommelier Blanc, but it's not intended to be that. It's intended to be something else. But Complex. still don't enjoy it. I mean, there's a, there's a myriad of wines in our range, which you can easily slot your palate into. In just 25 years, Jordan Wine Estate has established itself as a, a center for sundowners and jazz and fine food and wines, which have garnered you dozens of awards at home and against the best in the world. Uh, would you mind sharing with us some of the reasons besides the wine that we should hop in the car this weekend and visit the estate? Are you back to business now with this level one? Yeah, so we are open. We are open for business. We're trading. The, the weekend trade is very good. Um, the, the really positive thing about Jordan is that we've got this uh, really exp a real experience of the vista of the Stellenbosch Kloof. So we've got these large, beautiful decks underneath the trees. There's lots of fresh air. There's a beautiful, large lawn. There's a beautiful uh, dam in front of this lawn. So there's, if there's no, there's no reason for you to feel that when you're going to make the drive out of Jordan, which is essentially a destination, that you're going to feel that you have to be sit inside a building or being cramped. There's ampler space um, of to enjoy our wines in a fresh air atmosphere. But you know, even if you if you feel that you don't want to come for a fine dining experience at the Jordan restaurant, we've got the bakery at Jordan, which is a bit more of a casual feel you can which we and we serve impeccable breakfasts uh which is also part of our jordan luxury suites offering um so i i really want people to come out to jordan you know especially if you've supported our restaurant drive uh, last year which was immensely successful in terms of paying it forward and supporting the restaurant industry um all of them would have received the tasting voucher inside the case when we delivered the wine so Take a tasting voucher, come out to the farm, come and experience our wines, stay for breakfast, and don't plan everything else because once you're on the farm, you're going to want to stay here. <laughs> <laughs> there it is, spoken like a true GM. I love that. Okay, so Jacques Stein, I know you've got a lot to do. I uh, would like to just wrap up with some uh, quick fire questions to get to know you a little bit better. Uh, don't think too deeply about the answers, it's literally kind of the first okay. word or words that come to mind. And we'll start off with your first question. Favorite variety to drink? A Syrah. Syrah. Phenomenal. Mm. And of course, you're producing phenomenal Syrahs there on the Butler Hills. Um, most memorable, uh, 
polka dry hills, not not Butler. Hey, I've got my geography a bit confused there. Yeah, so so between Stalemos Kloof, but just around the corner of uh, Polka Dry, yeah. Yes. Uh, most memorable wine tasting experience that you've had today? Oh, uh, uh, I tasted a extensive range of wines at JJ Prum on the Mosul River, um, and that was probably the most brilliant wine experience I've ever had. Yeah. Uh, what have you done in your life that you're most proud of? Uh, as I'm sitting here, I'm glad that we uh, are safe on the other side of the COVID pandemic. It's not over yet, but I'm glad to say that our business is thriving and we are surviving and we've got a heartbeat. And that's probably what I'm the most proud of is that we could have weathered the bulk of the storm of this pandemic. Well, I want to say congratulations to you because there's not a lot of uh, companies that have been able to weather it and uh, many, many people falling victim to it. So well done to you and your team for sustaining. Uh, your next question, mask or buff? What's your preference? Mask. Yeah, same. A buff is just a little bit, and then you yeah. get it and it sticks to your face. And no. yeah. uh, Most unusual guest request that you've ever received? We, we still often receive them, but it's people asking if they can bring their own wine to the farm. Seriously, <laughs> yes. Oh. Like going to a restaurant and asking, "Can you bring your own food?" <laughs> oh, that, that that is ridiculous. Goodness. So I still find that unusual, um, but it, it still often happens. No. And do you? I, I hope you ask. Well, it, as long as it's Jordan wine, yes, you may certainly bring your own <laughs> Jordan wine. <laughs> I always say, to, if you can bring, if you can bring an, an a vintage Jordan wine, which I haven't tasted or the farm hasn't tasted, and you've invested in it. We're very happy for you to bring that along and, you know, come and experience it here. But yeah, that's probably what we would want you to do. Sure. Um, let's just enjoy what you produce. Well, you're invited to get along to Liquor City Claremont to buy some Jordan wine. And if you fancy your luck, then answer the very easy question here on the Via the Grapevine page. And you could win three bottles of unoaked Chardonnay, a vineyard tour for two people, valued at 1,200 Rand, and that includes a terroir tasting of five wines and a cellar tour. Total price package over 1,500 Rand. Thank you for that, Jacques Stein. What a wonderful prize yeah, that you're giving great away. Great pleasure, yeah, and it's a great time, you know, if they go out and win to come over the next four weeks. You know, it is harvest time, so there's lots of activity in the cellar. So if you really wanted to have a full on wine experience and understanding what happens during harvest time is the best time to come. So you'll actually let guests come in. You'll let the two winners come through and, and yeah. enjoy that. Yeah, yeah. we'll walk you through um, and you will be able to experience the carbon dioxide in the cellar air and all the fermentation aromas, the, the whole shebang. <laughs> Lovely stuff. Well, thank you for your time today. It's been a privilege chatting with you again. Great pleasure. Thank you very much, Guy. And yeah, uh, I, I'm not, I can't believe I'm saying this on the 10th of March, but stay warm. Yes, indeed. This via the grapevine brought to you by Liquor City Claremont. Visit their wine emporium for a journey via the grapevine.